Good afternoon. At the onset, I extend my profuse thanks to Dr. Bansi Sabu for having invited for this wonderful conclave. In fact, it's very interesting. We started innovating something for diabetes, and it turned out to be a drug useful for associated heart failure. Since the cardiovascular prevention trials became mandatory for anti-diabetic drugs, I think a lot of good effects were known for the newer drugs. The biggest problem is that hospitalization because of the diabetes as a result of micro and microvascular complication becomes a bigger challenge. And lately, the heart failure, once neglected complication, may be as common as coronary heart disease in patients with type 2 diabetes. And that was a newer complication which we started having this. Prevention and optimal treatment of CVD in this population will be the major worldwide health policy change during next decade, and hence we need to be very careful about. So far, we didn't knew that we didn't know about it. The higher incidence of heart failure in diabetic patient, the risk of heart failure is not influenced at all. Even if you have the very good glycemic control, patient continues to have issues of increased incidence of heart failure and hospitalization because of heart failure. The risk of vascular events that persist high to very high after intensive glucose control despite of attainment of near to normal A1C levels. It means we need to be very careful and observant in two type 2 diabetic for impending heart failure. Type 2 diabetes has been considered as an equivalent of cardiovascular disease and as such each type 2 diabetic patient should be treated as a secondary prevention patient. But the issue is that type 2 diabetic is not a ischemic heart disease which requires the secondary prevention and hence equivalence of type 2 diabetes makes it emphatic that they need to be taken, they need to be treated like the primary prevention to prevent the impending heart failure. Burden of hospitalization for heart failure is very well known. The risk of death rises sharply when a patient is admitted to be hospital and in decompensated heart failure state. Secondly, in the days after discharge, patients with low ejection fraction heart failure are at high risk of dying at home after discharge, and each successive hospitalization is associated with greater risk of death in longer term. These are all the consequences newly observed in type 2 diabetic patient. If you look at this one-year outpatient mortality with combination of medical therapy for heart failure, even if the patient who stands untreated, partially treated, there's almost 17% mortality. People with two drug diabetic patients not adequately controlled have almost 10%. And even with the three drug combination or the four drug combination, even including ARNI, et cetera, there's a, some incidence of heart failure in type two diabetic patient. All four foundational therapy classes should be trialed before routine addition of personalized therapies which is very important, and hence there is a burning a higher incidence of heart failure in type 2 diabetic patients. There has been multiple studies where SGL2 inhibitors act as a continuum of heart failure have been found to be effective in acute as well as chronic heart failure. Let me give you an example of a case history. 56-year-old man with type 2 diabetes for last 10 years, Anti-diabetic drugs, he's on metformin, sulfonylurea, DPP-4 inhibitors at maximal doses. Hypertension and dyslipidemia on high-intensity statin, ACE inhibitors and calcium channel blockers as per guidelines recommended. There's no history of CV event or heart failure and hv is 6.8, EGFR is 58. Since last visit, eight months back, two kg weight gain. Now, weight gain is one of the very important parameters which is happening in the type 2 diabetic patient as an incipient heart failure and decline in EGFR by 5 ml and rise in UACR of 20%. What should be the next line of management? Major concerns are maintain glycemic control, management of comorbid conditions, prevention of CVM and prevention of further decline in renal parameters EGFR and albuminuria. The possible steps you can take in this patient are protein-restricted diet, increase in dose of ACE inhibitors, increase dose of statins, add insulin, add an SGL2 inhibitor with proven renal benefit and try other therapies accordingly. Heart failure drug treatment, there's a 
classical four drugs available, ARNI, MRA, beta blockers, SGL2 inhibitors. The beneficial effect of dapagliflozin was consistent in patients on a beta blocker, that is MRA and ARNI. The hazards ratio for the primary endpoint was 0.7 as compared with the 0.74 in patient without an ARNI, which is very important. The novel mechanism of action of SGL2 inhibitor in heart failure, probably all of you would know, and there is an altered adipokine regulation, there is a decrease in leptin levels, there is autophagy induction, improved cardiac ionic homeostasis, and improved myocardial emergencies. There is an increase in leptin levels, leading to more of the cardiac fibrosis, decrease in the cardiac pumping action, and ultimately leading to the low ejection fraction heart failure. And SGL2 inhibitors, by affecting all these mechanisms, brings about the increased cardiovascular outcome, which is a very well, very well documented issue. An innovative multidisciplinary collaborative protocol to optimize SGL2 use in patient with low ejection fraction heart failure is very important. The recommendations are optimize CV risk assessment, optimize CV risk factor management, ensure patients are on GTMT consisting of ACRB, ARNI, beta blocker, or MRA, and target doses. And it is very important that we can use SGL2 agents and doses with trial data and FDA approval status of low ejection fraction heart failure, which is there. The initiation of therapy in the stable patient long after decompensation often leads to delayed start of drug therapy and patients are not well treated, especially after discharge, where a particularly high mortality and hospitalization rate occurs. And hence, it has a great advantage even with the patient with heart failure discharge from hospital to prevent the recurrence of heart failure or readmissions. The key mortality outcome of multiple RCTs assessing SGL2 inhibitors among patients with heart failure, there's been 14 percent relative risk reduction in all care mortality and CV mortality among patients with heart failure treated with SGL2 inhibitors, which is so phenomenal. The hospitalization for heart failure results from recent CV safety trials of SGL2 inhibitors, and it has been very well documented with all these SGL2 inhibitors. The therapeutic target of pharmacological treatment in patients with low ejection fraction heart failure is inhibition of tubule glomerular feedback by SGL2 induces a rebalance of adenosine-mediated dense macular response and inhibition of RAS activation. This mechanism drives the nephroprotection observed in heart failure as well as patients with a chronic kidney failure, and it is very important in addition to beta blockers, MRA, ARNI, or once the SGL2 inhibitors are added. There has been a modification to the therapeutic algorithm for a patient with symptomatic heart failure with low ejection fraction following results from DAPA-HF. What a great trial it was, DAPA-HF trial, where Diabetics and non-diabetics, when they were subjected to dapagliflozine, and there was a significant improvement in incidence of heart failure and the readmissions for heart failure. Individually or in the combination of ARNI and SGL2 are well tolerated. This is another good advantage with reduced rate of treatment discontinuation. So it can be very well coupled up SGL2 inhibitors with ARNI, which has been documented beyond doubt in congestive heart failure in case of type 2 diabetic. Despite the use of ARNI, depagliflozine is a novel cost-effective treatment option for refractive low ejection fraction heart failure in Indian patients. And it has been very well documented that there has been a decrease in almost 69% in NYHA class. Pro-BNP goes significantly down almost by 91% and left ventricular ejection fraction improves by 23.6%. What a documented improvement in the congestive heart failure in type 2 diabetic patient. Timeline of initiating guidelines directed medical therapy for patients admitted with low ejection fraction heart failure are very important. SGL2 inhibitors demonstrated efficacy as important four pillar of the treatment protocol Together, this combination can add over six additional years of life to span for people with low ejection fraction. It can be added at all the levels, and it improves the 
heart failure status, early discharge from the hospital, and prevents the readmissions because of heart failure. In Indian phenotype, one third of North Indian patients with type 2 diabetes less than 50 years had a high risk of atherosclerosis. Asian Indians have more than two times prevalence of lean BMI in young onset type 2 compared to the white European. Hence, heart failure was a, another very major challenge. After discharge following an episode of acute heart failure worsening, high rates of rehospitalization and death have been recognized and the term vulnerable phase of the heart failure syndrome was coined and here SGL2 inhibitors plays a very important role whether diabetic or non-diabetic and we could prevent the re admission and re-hospitalization of the patients. Benefits of SGL2 inhibitors on the risk of death and hospitalization in patients with heart failure accrue within days to weeks after initiation. So very fast to act, very effective to act, and very uh, definite results we can see about it. The key priority in type 2 diabetic patient should be the implementation of multiple risk factor control from diagnosis using affordable glucose lowering therapies to reduce the increasing microvascular and macrovascular burden in patient without establish acute CVD to advance early therapy, hence it is very important and this need to be done. How SGL2 inhibitors improve the cardiac function, prevent the heart failure, this is a wonderful mechanism given here. It is metabolic and hemodynamic action as well as it has wide range of physiological effect decreasing from weight to the body mass to reduce the atrial fibrosis, reduce the AF substrate myocardial loading condition is reduced, it prevents the LA stretch, it reduces the PV volume and stretch. It's wonderful, a hemodynamic and a structural improvement in the cardiac function which happens, preventing the cardiac fibrosis and the cardiac pumping which is very important. There's been a significant therapy effect of heart failure population and general population and it has been found out that beta blockers bring about reduction to the tune of 44%, 44%. They have significant reduction, but SGL2 inhibitors have got wonderful advantage of matching, reducing the incidence of heart failure, and it can be recommended at all stages from beginning to the advanced heart failure, we can go for it. SGL2 inhibitors improve heart failure outcome in wide spectrum of patients, widespread adoption of SGL2 inhibitor can considerably reduce the burden of heart failure in type 2 diabetic patient. And hence, there are some barriers to the update of SGL2 inhibitor in clinical practice and proposed solutions are there and which can be taken care of. Complexity of current guidelines pertaining to SGL2 inhibitor use, but improve the clarity of guidelines and provide further information on how and when best to apply. And all these reservations can be overcome with adequate selection of the patient and keeping note of it. There are recommendations for SGL2 inhibitors in heart failure guidelines. ESC says dapagliflozin and empagliflozin are recommended for patients with heart failure to reduce risk of heart failure, hospitalization, and death, which is proved beyond diet. ACC also says that it can be used very safely along with the standard line of treatment and Canadian guidelines also recommend it very strongly. There are multiple cases where there has been classical feature of heart failure in type 2 diabetic patient where can be SGL2 inhibitors or GLP-1 agonists can be thought of. Now this is the need of time that because of SGL2 inhibitors are one which are very effective in the longer phase of type 2 diabetes. Type 2 diabetic patient starts with a 50% beta cell knocked out and become insulinopenic in due course of time. And hence, these SGL2 inhibitors are very effective in glycemic control, but added advantage of taking care of heart failure, which is very important. I'll quickly, just half minute more I'll take, sir, that this uncontrolled type 2 diabetes, despite metformin and EGFR, Control type 2, like it can be combined in all the situation of classical type 2. I already talked about how effective cardio protection mechanism as you inhibitor. Look at the 
number of the ways the SGL2 inhibitors by physiological, the anti-inflammatory effect, the anti-fibrotic effect, they bring about the improvement in the cardiac condition along with the renoprotective effect they have. I'll just go to the, these are the multiple trials which has proved beyond documentation. Amparec, Canvas, Declare, what is Scorpio, that yes, SGL2 inhibitors have been preventing the new onset or preventing the recurrence of the heart failure, which confirms the benefit. They have the benefit in MACE, heart failure, in multiple trials and multiple, all SGL2 inhibitors have proven. These primary prevention with diabetes and secondary prevention in diabetes has been documented very well with the SGL2 inhibitors. Multiple studies have confirmed, and I'll just conclude that management of type 2 diabetes has moved from glucocentric approach to a patient-centric approach looking at long-term benefit. Drugs that offer additional non-glycemic benefits are being increasingly prescribed and recommended for type 2 diabetes. SGL2 inhibitor have good clinical data to show primary prevention of cardiorenal involvement. Since diabetes is considered equivalent to ischemic heart disease, so though they deserve secondary, but it, they need to be treated as a primary prevention. Compared to GLP-1 receptor agonists, SGL2 inhibitors can be prescribed orally, even in patients with moderate body weight for long-term primary secondary prevention. The additional issue with GLP-1 receptor agonists like GI side effects, high rates of non-responders, need for injection and need for monitoring liver functions, probably SGL2 inhibitors have a great advantage which can be thought of. So if you look into this, we need to recognize the occult or high incidence of heart failure in type 2 diabetics and probably SGL2 inhibitors becomes a drug of choice in the second part or the later part of type 2 diabetic being an insulin dependent drug probably it has a great advantage of preventing and readmissions of hospital and recurrence of the heart failure with improving all the ejection fraction to great level with the classical protection in the physiology and the anatomy of the myocardium thank you very much thank you